there is another new stuff which is called the document transfer. Now, what is the objective of that document transfer? That the part of the amount we have, we need to send to another contract account. Like we have something business partner, contract account, contract all the details we have, those are open. And we what we do, we choose all these amount against another business partner contract account contract, and we cleared the open item against business partner one. Okay, that means the open items are moved to another uh, business partner contract account, and the current uh, business partner is cleared. Okay, so that is called document transfer. It's like transforming the open items to another uh, business partner. Now, mostly the document transfer is very simple or manually we need to do. We need to go to direct to SPRO and uh, go to the transfer condition and go to the defined transfer region through their condition. Yeah, I'm just trying to explain the transfer of the document. Uh, you need to go to the SPRO and uh, go to this transaction. Just put the region for the transfer condition. And in the last, you can see the defined transaction for the transforming the item. Now here you can execute and transfer the, by passing the business partner source and uh, destination and you can execute that so that's how the, the transfer it will be a straightforward thing only this stuff is like uh, uh, the amount will move to the another account then the next type of uh, transforming or we call that individual value adjustment so we have a document number okay from the fica table we get the document number and that document number has amount and uh, there is the open item of 38. So this 38 amount is open. Uh, now, out of this, the total amount, 58, the individual value adjustment is 50% minus net. Okay. So the whatever the total amount is there, 58, out of which 50% is something like 16.38, uh, which is 38 uh, divided by 2. Okay, which is 16.38. Now that amount, we need to you know, clear them or adjust them. That as per the, like, it is based mostly on the policies of the government or the utility company, how much amount we need to adjust. So if we, we are in a condition that where we need to do the adjustment and we first identify the item, open item, which we call the, you know, the doubtful item. And we identify the doubtful amount is 38. From 38, we identify, as per the policy, we can adjust up to 50%. So that is 16.38. So the calculation is done, 38 and 16.38 is applied. So what the final document get posted, it will subtract that and create this amount. Now, as we mark it as doubtful, okay, it will mass posting will happen to correct the document. Now, uh, now the condition here, when we apply these doubtful adjustments, that just to clean the general ledger, not not to left any small amount and clean the general ledger. Okay, so that's how we do the uh, doubtful marks. That means we clean the general ledger, uh, whatever the open items we find the table DFKK JW, but with a text or with a condition that it is a doubtful amount, and then we post that. Okay, it is automatic in some time in general, but sometime we need to do that manual posting. Okay, so if we put this doubtful receivable and payable. Finally, uh, like here you can see contract account one is 58, paid is 20. So we left with 38, which was the example of the last one. Okay, so we left with 38. So that part I, I can uh, leave like 20 is paid. So 20 is coming, 20 is get cleared. And finally, we have 38, which we need to correct. Okay, so this 38 came from number four. Number four, one, two, so four. This one is the four and it will go to clear with 38. But as per adjustment rules, we are only getting 16.38, which is the um, adjustment amount we are getting. And that we need to post at the, um, at the uh, uh, debit side. So that means it is get cleared. Okay, 16.38 is get cleared. And this doubtful amount also need to get cleared. So we need to post both the stuff um, into a single link like here. And we'll post that the amount into the, uh, into the tables like the FKK JW table will clear. Okay. Now how it is happening adjustment clearance. So adjustment clearance again happens to um, uh, like we need to go to the SPRO and go to the adjustment clearance and we can do that. Okay. It can be manually or sometimes we create some uh, G transaction to do that. Okay. So these are the steps 
when we do posting for doubtful amount. Uh, first, we create the bill that is get posted, then posting incoming payment general ledger account to check which account we are posting. And uh, then we need to find the sub ledgers and uh, we mark them the doubtful, mark them the doubtful means it's just a text message or tick mark. Uh, and then we post that as the adjustment amount. So this is the doubtful individual value as for SPRO. You can see here doubtful item on individual value adjustment. So when we are posting as doubtful, you can put the conditions, the regions why it is doubtful. And then it will act as the resetting and then adjustment. So all these conditions we need to just configure and then we use that. Others based on the practices of the uh, uh, business we can do. And finally, we need to do the posting. Okay. Then, so we learn like reversal, clearance, resetting, resetting clearance, doubtful mark. But more, if some amount is not paid at all and the government decided to clear it up, okay, we, we need not to mark it as doubtful or we need not to give them some instrument and it's it's like it's dead. So in that case, we are using the write off option. So write off is again manual stuff. So to do the write off, we need to identify the labels, first business partner, account, contract and documents. How many documents are pending there for how long? And we need to check the rules, okay? Is it not clear for a longer time? If that amount is so high, so low, all those conditions we need to check. And also we need some authorizations from the from the um, specific people, like from superiors that, okay, this amount we need to write off, we need to clear, just give a go ahead. Those authorizations will check, <clears throat> give you permission. And once it permission is given, the, you know, the customer is identified, the amount is checked, then we can proceed for the write-off. Okay, so write-off basically is totally clear or release the <clears throat> collection. That means that amount will be closed for the general ledger and for the contract, right? So like um, uh, some days, some years back, uh, India government write-off in the farmer's loan, which is very huge amount. So it happened, most of the banks, they do the write-off uh, for some customers uh, and government also provide right up to some condition or customers. So those things will be useful. Uh, but it basically where there is no expectation to gain any money, in that case, we do the right up. Okay. So how the posting happens for the right up? So again, we take that 58 example. So 2038. Now 38 is marked as uh, doubtful. Now we understand that 38 it will never come. So what we do, we we try to write off it, but first we check, okay, is there any other calculations we need to apply? So we check, yes, the taxes are also there, tax amounts are also there. We do the calculation for the electricity, which is the consumption, the tax amount, which is 5.24. So most of the happen, what happened, even if we do the write off, the tax is mostly given to government. So the tax would may be different, okay? So the tax amount we need to calculate and we define that. Whatever the bank we are uh, getting is 20. So the clearing, we cleared 2020, the tax amount, whatever is there, we just uh, subtracted from eight. So we have left some 2.76, no, no, 5.25 subtracted from 38, it becomes 32.76. Okay, so that's reduction you get and whatever left, whatever left we need to uh, clear that. So. You can recollect once we put a doubtful, we're not cleared, and at the end, right now, we are clearing that amount. Okay. That means before a write off, our first posting is to identify the doubtful amount. Once the doubtful amount is identified, then only the next phase, we are just clearing them up. Okay. And once we clear it off or write off, we put the document number. A write up document number against the document number on, for which we cleared that the amount, the write off region why you cleared on which date. Now, all these details would be part of the um, write off history and it will automatically store in write off history. Okay. Now, here you can see there are no reversals, no statistical items, no clearing, resetting, nothing, just the document and the write off. So, everything is clear. So that means internally we clean everything and the customer is now clear, clear from collection. So we release the collection part as well. 
So for write-off configuration, we go to the SPRO and put all these write-off regions, default write-off conditions, uh, the uh, the general ledgers for the write-off. Okay, like we define the general ledgers by sub um, main and sub. So you can define a ledger for write-off as well, a different ledger. So when the write-off will happen, it will hit that ledger and post it there on there. Okay. So similarly, as I mentioned, during the write-up, we do the uh, tax adjustment calculation as well, how much tax we can deduct and then we do the write-up. So that tax write-up, you can check here. Okay. So that is the write-up is over here. And then we'll proceed to the next or uh, the last session, which is called security deposit. So, uh, this session is mostly about whatever the amount left behind, how we are managing them. The total session is about that, like whether we go to clear them, reset them, reverse them, reset, adjust them, put a condition as doubtful and write off. So these are all these uh, tools you can see in your hand to make the amount balance uh, for the posting amounts. If it is not paid or any regions, if the GL is not balanced out, we need to use these tools to balance it out. Okay, any questions?